guys, some gamer dude here. Last time we discussed the nature of the cross ride and how, despite the mechanic being very controversial, it was never broken or made a deck better by its very nature. More clans could cope attacking it than is commonly remembered, and only one of the three prominent decks when cross ride was considered a big problem was a cross ride, despite there being two in existence. Dragonic Overlord the end did, however, warp the game in both Japan and the West around himself. But was he broken? This is a question I want to raise today. He most assuredly was a problem and warped the game around himself, but was he fundamentally broken? To answer this, Go back to the beginning. And look at the other two restanding vanguards in block one of Vanguard. This starts with the OG Dragonic Overlord from the original two trial deck releases. The part of Dragonic Overlord we want to look at is his act effect. For CB3 and losing twin drive if he's on Vanguard, he gains plus 5,000 and hit a rearguard stand this unit. This allows him to swing for 16,000 or two stages with one drive check on Vanguard with a 32.6% chance of hitting a trigger. Then do it again for each of their front rearguard units, provided he hits them, then do it again to the other rearguard, and then finally the vanguard. If the opponent allows both of their front rearguard to be killed by Dragonic Overlord, you actually net a plus one in something tangible and minus to the opponent. This is generally seen as better on the rearguard as the effect stays for the turn. The vanguard will not lose twin drive and a stand trigger will allow Dragonic Overlord to start up again should he fail. But none of that is what we're looking for, it's the maths of the effect. The plus 5000 and CB2 are both worth one card at this point in time. The final CB and giving up twin drive is what gives the on hit rearguard effect. Twin drive is directly one card and the final CB is worth half a card, as is the restriction that he has to hit a rearguard. We could say him restanding is worth two cards. The V slash R nature of the card has no bearing on it, cards only get better on either one, not both. So let's see how this plays out compared to later cards. The next card we look at is Stern Blaukluger, a more direct comparison to Dragonic Overlord The End. On Vanguard and on Vanguard Hit, for CB2, pitch to Nerva Grapplers who stand him, the rearguard behind, and he loses Twin Drive until the end of the turn. Stern is a bit interesting in that he's allowed to be a lot better because of his on-hit nature. He doesn't have to act for a hit like Dragonic Overlord. We have established that restanding costs two cards. How does this play out? Quite well, actually. It's really direct. CB2 equals one card, he pitches two cards and loses Twin Drive for a total of four cards. But he stands himself and his booster, which are two cards themselves. He is completely balanced, he just never had the time to shine. Now we finally hit the main man and the topic of the day. We have established what effects costs and the trend to prove it. How does Dragonic Overlord The End stack up? Dragonic Overlord The End is on hit, CB2, Persona Blast to restand. Persona Blast is generally considered to have a value of two cards. So The End actually ends up costing three cards for his restand. Of all things, this might sound a little bit overcosted, but he has to hit, not hit a specific thing. Probably accounting for his CB2. He's allowed to be wide open to increase his costs, so that he doesn't go completely out of control. Dragonic Overlord The End is actually perfectly costed in terms of what he does, weirdly enough. He's not broken per se, but he completely warped two metas. So what is he then? To answer this, we have to look at the opposite side of the argument. Why was Dragonic Overlord The End so hard to fight? It's two things in tandem. Dragonic Overlord The End has a ton of pressure. The End himself is pressure regardless of what he targets, but can have up to three stages of power. The 13,000 base with a vanilla grade one. With this, you need to guard for 20,000 for two to pass, consistently. 20,000 made up of two triggers that you probably only have 12 of max. Letting it hit is just giving too much to your opponent and one to pass is too risky with the twin drives base 55.1% chance of hitting one trigger. In conjunction with this, Dragonic Overlord The End is usually packing Velocity Dragon, pressure to unflip damage, allowing it to use cards like Berserk Dragon, a card that kills your opponent's rearguard without having the CB cost interfere with The End too much. 
There is also the use of heat now salamander. Pressure to retire a grade one without a CB cost. The deck also had Burning Horn Dragon, Overlord's Bedivere clone, allowing it to hit crossroads for two stages, but it also hit 10,000 base vanguards for three stages with a vanilla grade one booster, as well as three stages with a 7,000 booster against a 9,000 or less rear guard. There were many diverse choices for grade one and grade two. Not every deck ran the cards I called out by the vanilla grade one and burning horn dragon but regardless the deck could pressure you into guarding it very easily and kill your rear guard in conjunction with this outside of Sukiyomi and the two paladin clans plus ones that actually gave you cards were nearly non-existent these two together result in a situation where the end starts feeling like it's capable of doing too much in a meta where no one else can do anywhere near as much and nothing can really keep up with the pressure the deck is putting out. Or to be more precise, the deck that Dragonic Overlord the End inhabits is much closer to a Break Ride era deck, minus the Break Ride, but with a vastly faster boss, one not limited by Limit Break. This is why Kagero did so well, this is why the End was able to dominate the game. The boss was insanely strong and the clan was far ahead of its time. But neither Kagero nor Dragonic Overlord the End were broken. They were just better supported. As time progressed, Bushiroad repeated the problems of Block 1. There were nice new cards during Limit Break, but no deck was quite as synergistic and strong as Dragonic Overlord the End. They were all missing something that deck had. Finally, with the Break Ride era, Dragonic Overlord the End's impact upon the game had taken full effect. Bushiroad introduced archetypes as a means of introducing arbitrary restrictions to excuse higher power and more synergistic decks. They made the game catch up to the end and as a little side buff forced people to buy new decks. This started a situation where for three consecutive blocks, Break Ride, Legion and G, the player was asked to buy a new deck to be remotely viable. As the game power crept each time by introducing new mechanics and new arbitrary restrictions on effects. Ultimately, this all led to the reboot in May. This is the damage Dragonic Overlord The End did to Cardfight Vanguard.